can't get near you! More Terminators! How many? I count three! They must have eavesdropped on our conversation. We're on their radar now. God damn it! They were waiting for us! We're surrounded! Take positions! I got this! Leaving already? Too many of them! Hold it! Through here! Come on! Follow her!
inside! Get inside! Get us out of here. We just have to make our way to that industrial building. As soon as that aerial moves, we run. It's clear. Go! out of here. Where to? The shelter! I'm, uh, I'm sorry about before. And I'm sorry about your soldiers. No need for that. You'll have a hard time getting up every morning if you dwell on that too much. Machines don't do that. If we want to destroy them, neither can we. Rivers, since Pacific Division no longer exists, you will now answer to me. That makes you a part of TechCom. Congratulations. No more sitting around waiting for Skynet to come to you. Over here we go out there and meet the enemy face on. This is it. Resistance Shelter South Division. Baron, DN38217. Commander. There with me. Where are the others? Where's my husband? They're dead. Over here's our quartermaster. If you need anything beyond the standard issue equipment, work it out with him. And here's Alvin, residing chief Egghead. Uh, I prefer laboratory director. Like I said, Egghead. He supplies all techcom units with weapon modifications. Everything looks well organized. It is. Everyone pulls their weight here. If someone doesn't, we become weak. And you can probably imagine where I stand on being weak. I'll get right to it. There's a reason I decided to meet you. 
We intercepted some interesting data. It turns out you're part of a prestigious group. A group of people that Skynet marked for termination. See, John Connor, the leader of the Resistance, is number one on that list. Then, there's me. I know, I'm flattered. Every day, we lead, we fight, and we plan on how to destroy Skynet's central core. So I know exactly why we're on that fucking list. But why would Private Rivers be number three? That infiltrator said something about me being marked for termination. Huh. Interesting. I'll have to have a word with Connor about that. And that brings me to my second point, your first assignment. After the Annihilation Line got to Pasadena, Skynet started building installations there. I want you to go there and collect some intel, so we know what we're up against. Sounds dangerous. It will be. Check with Alvin before you go, he'll have something for you. Remember, you might be valuable to Skynet, but the way I see it, you're still a private. Dismissed. And Rivers! Civilians don't need to know about what happened out there. Here you have something for me. I do. Commander Baron wanted me to show you how to customize your weapons. Something I've been working on for some time now. You see, your standard phased plasma is in a 40 watt range. However, you can upgrade its damage, shooting rate, or stability using decoded chips. The same ones you've been collecting from fallen terminators. You can do the upgrades yourself. When you're done, go to the quartermaster. I believe he has something for you as well.
I'm Private Rivers. You got something for me? I've been told you're using old goggles from the Pacific Division. Those aren't even standard issue anymore. Commander Baron asked me to hook you up with the latest version. These babies come equipped with a high-quality camera. What do I do with them? The idea is that when you reach Pasadena, you'll take pictures of Skynet's offensive installations. When you find them, put the goggles on, then aim and shoot. The pictures will be automatically sent to a military satellite that we hijacked from Skynet. They'll give us the necessary intel to prepare for when the Annihilation Line comes. That's it? That's it. We have a place ready for you here when you come back. Before you leave, take a look and see if there's anything else you need. I can get my hands on almost anything, but I don't normally hand out freebies. <laughs> That's it then. You're leaving us and going back to Pasadena. Not yet. I need to collect the rest of my stuff from our hideout. Fine by me. Let's go. Please, you need to tell me what happened there. Where's my husband? <clears throat> I'm sorry, I can't talk about that. Please! Jesus, Jacob! We were ambushed. Near the unfinished metro station, and he didn't stand a chance. I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh my god. Thank you for telling me this. Thank you for caring. I don't care what Baron says. This woman deserves to hear the truth. Not knowing would destroy her. Aaron would kill to know what happened to her husband. Patrick! Look, look! Ryan fixed it! Ryan fixed the bus! <laughs> That's great news! Did you help? No. I was there and helping Mark. He's doing much better now. I heard about Mark. What happened? It was a close call, but he's on the mend now. And I have to thank you for that. So, thank you. So, what's new with you? I've been ordered to go to Pasadena to collect some intel. Is there anything you need from there? Right now, I don't need anything. But there's something you might be interested in. When we were running away the other day, Colin was supposed to bring something. Boxes of adrenaline, painkillers, and who knows what else. Since he didn't bring anything with him, I'd imagine everything's still there. Those stimulants might be useful to you. When used in small doses, they can improve focus and alertness. If I were you, I'd take a look. Do you need help with anything? No, I'm fine. I had to learn to do things by myself for quite a while, sweetie. Now, 
Tell me, what did you really want to ask me? How did you become a doctor? Like anyone else before the war. I studied. Not that it matters, but I'm not technically a doctor. Judgment Day got in the way of graduation. But not only did my medical training save other people's lives, it even saved mine. I was spared when a bunch of us got captured by the machines. Maybe they thought it would be worth having a doctor in there. I don't know. What happens at those camps? People get tortured, experimented on, cut to pieces. I couldn't watch at first, but I soon realized that I had to do what no one else could. I had to bear witness to the atrocities. You were actually the first person that wasn't afraid to ask. They're all scared of me, like, like I'm carrying some sort of disease. But they're still coming to me for medicine. Ironic, isn't it? You didn't change your mind about joining the Resistance? No. I'm packed and ready to go. You're the one that kept saying that we're going when in fact we're not. Oh, you really pissed me off, I must say. About that camp. What do you want to know? How did the machines communicate with you? There was this one machine. We called it Nurse Ratchet. It was designed to look almost friendly. It wore an awful, smiling, rubber human face. At the end of every week, it took the weakest of us for experimentation. My cellmate, Karen, was pregnant. I knew that was a one-way ticket to the grinder, so I had to plan an escape. What was your plan? I figured our best chance of getting out was with the bodies. That way, hypothermia was the only thing we had to worry about. The baby came early, and Karen died giving birth. She didn't even get to see her child. I had to take action. Me and one other prisoner took the child, and we got to the disposal room, where we covered ourselves with dead bodies. Then we just lay there, waiting for them to throw us out. And they did. They dumped us outside the camp, ready for the grinder. Were you still behind the Annihilation Line? Yes. We couldn't find anyone for days. We thought we were the last of the human race. Just the two of us and a baby girl. We ran to protect her, but deep down we were preparing for the worst. Anyway, you're healthy, right? And your bones don't look broken, so stop bothering me. You never told me you had a husband. <laughs> you never asked. Was he at that camp with you? He was. Sweet little man. I had to take care of him when they sent us to work, because he was so fragile. Back at the camp, I used to think that the machines kept Peter alive to get me to cooperate. So when there was an opportunity to run, we had to take it. And we did. We ran with this little child that I had started to love. I felt that she was mine. What was her name? Her name was Taylor. Peter said it sounded too manly. So I said, good, we'll finally have a man in the family. But as you know nowadays, no story has a happy ending. She died shortly after. We buried her, and we stopped talking to each other. Eventually, the Annihilation Line caught up with us. We got separated. I ran away. He did too. At least, I hope he did. That's all.
And I see you got that bus running again. You didn't think I would, did you? Well, don't write me off just yet. I still got it. Anyhow, I got something for you. It's called a termination knife. It's supposed to shut down a terminator with a single stab. So if you sneak in and you want to take them down silently, well, that's your go-to weapon. I guess you could say it terminates terminators. Wow, that was almost as bad as Jan. Where did you get that? A group of travelers came by earlier. We traded, talked for a while. Actually, they said something that got my attention. Something about meeting a guy out there who kept asking about Jacob Rivers. He said he didn't seem right. You don't think it's that thing that you told us about before, do you? Sorry, I probably should have said something right away. Have you changed your mind about joining the Resistance? No. No, I have not. I think I'm better off anywhere that bus takes me. I'm moving out tomorrow. Anyone who wants to join is more than welcome to, but I don't suppose you're interested. What's on your mind? Well, you really got me thinking about old Tucker again. In times like these, I wouldn't mind having him around. He always know what to do. He was the only one who didn't lose his mind after Judgment Day. How did you handle it? I didn't. I couldn't understand it. Nowadays, children are born with the idea of death, but back then, uh, I lived without a clue. I felt sick when I saw blood on TV. Tucker said, we need to be calm right now. I listened to him. We all did, survivors from the concert. Did you contact the military? Well, we uh, eventually found a military base. We assumed that we were safe. But all we found was one crazy dude responsible for nuclear missiles. His whole job was to watch a button that he might never have to press. Imagine what he felt when Skynet sent those nukes without his knowledge. I wonder if he ever pushed that button after Judgment Day. <laughs> Might as well, right? Finally, we found a couple houses, but the people there were as confused as we were. All the communication went to shit. Tucker managed to find some batteries, and uh, we sat in front of our boombox. They started to list cities to avoid. Cities that were hit by the nuclear bombs. How many cities were hit? I don't know exactly how many, but it took them a couple of minutes just to go through the A's. We looked at each other crying. We just wanted to go home and be with family, but Tucker said that for now, the safest place there is is right where we were. So we decided to stay and start a camp. Moving out? I am. Do you need anything from Pasadena? No. I'm fine. Are you sure? Yes. There's nothing that I need from there. Bite out of me. I don't remember getting this cut. Is that him? Yeah, that's him. J Looks like things are finally starting to go our way. Laura tells me you're looking for volunteers that'll join the resistance. You can count me in. It only seems fair since I owe you my life.
You're going to Pasadena? Yep, I am. I have a mission for you, a secret mission, super important. Probably the most important of them all. What is it? Could you bring me my chalk? Chalk? Yeah, it's at my house. The one with the beware sign on the side. Could you bring it to me? I mean, if you could. I did bring you that bullet one time. I'll see what I can do. Cool.